This is Lecture 18, Investment Under, under Uncertainty. I'm going to be talking about the case of Sims Metal Management, a company in Brooklyn, New York. So in the New York Times, and I give you the source below, there's an interesting case study today about a New York City firm that because of an investment it made, it uh, easily survived Hurricane Sandy. I'll read to you the quote. But the real storm preparation had been accomplished six years earlier when Sims Metal Management approved a design for a state-of-the-art city recycling plant that is rising in South Brooklyn's marine terminal. The company, when reviewing projections for local sea level rise, the company and its architects decided to elevate portions of the site to heights exceeding the city's requirements by four feet. Using recycled glass and crushed rock discarded from projects like the 2nd Avenue subway line in Manhattan, they raised the foundation for the plant's four buildings and dock. In a $100 million project, this added $550,000. So that's roughly uh, uh, half a percent, not a large amount to pay in costs uh, for this implicit insurance. The end of the case study. But this investment proved more than worth it. When a 12-foot Hurricane Sandy storm surge swept through the nearby streets and parking lots on October 29th, the plant's dock and partly completed buildings did not flood. And here's a quote. It paid for itself long before we expected it, said Mr. Outerbridge. It was built with the idea that over the next 40 years, this would prove a prudent thing, and the proof came during construction. So this for-profit company anticipated that climate change could have some impacts on its Brooklyn location and made a costly upfront investment to reduce the damage such an anticipated storm could cause. And when such a storm came in, they did not bear the cost that others in Manhattan have. So I want to think about this a little more abstractly, but that's an exciting case study of how ex-ante investment in elevating key pieces of infrastructure reduce the flood risk. So now some algebra. Suppose that a business that's profit maximizing can spend F dollars now to lower the probability uh, that a disaster occurs. So in this case, think of the disaster as, as flood damage. And so in the symbols here, this company can pay F dollars now and if it makes that investment, it lowers the probability each year that there's a disaster from omega to omega divided by two. So if omega was 2%, a 2% chance of a disaster, if you make this F dollar one-time investment, that probability falls to one. Uh, two divided by two is one. And let's assume, to keep the algebra simple, that this company exists for three years. If a disaster occurs, let's assume the firm loses G dollars if this is the flood damage caused. Let's assume that the market rate of interest is R percent. We can now write down the equation for when a risk-neutral profit-maximizing firm would make the investment in, uh, in, of this F dollars. So look at this inequality at the bottom of the slide. To the right of the inequality, that's the F dollars you have to spend to make sure, uh, to make the investment to keep everything safe. And now let's read from left to right. That left term, omega divided by 2 times G, that is the expected value of savings from making the investment this year. Again, the th this investment lasts for three years by assumption. The middle term is this, the expected benefits of making the investment in year two. The, the, you reduce the probability by omega divided by two of losing G dollars, but that's next year, and then we discount that by one plus the interest rate to bring that back to dollars today. And similarly, the third term, omega divided by two times G divided by one plus the interest rate squared. And so the left side of this equation represents the expected present discounted value of the benefits of making this investment, and economics tells us that you make such an investment if the expected present discounted value of the benefits is greater than the expected present discounted value of the costs, and that's just F, the upfront investment. Some intuition. The firm trades off the benefits and costs of making this investment. It bears the costs of purchasing the, this insurance now that it has to pay F dollars. The rational firm weighs this sure cost against the expected present discounted value of benefits from making this investment. And again, here I write down again the algebra. And folks, here's the key point. The left side of this equation, 
the left of the inequality, represents the expected present discounted value of the benefits of making this safety investment. And this left side is going to be larger if the probability of disaster reduction is larger, uh, th that is, omega is larger. E, for example, consider the case if omega equals zero, the firm would never make this investment because there's no benefits from making this costly investment. The larger is G, where G is the dollar damage caused if a disaster occurs. Also, if the number of years that the investment lives on, in this simple example, the number of years was just three, but that it could have been a longer lived investment. A, and if the interest rate is lower, that means that the opportunity cost of an upfront investment is lower and you're more likely to make such an investment. Want to wrap up with discussing why a, a self-interested firm may not make this investment in climate ad adaptation. First, it might be liquidity constrained. It may not have the F dollars to finance the upfront investment. In that case, there may be a role for government to lend uh, there, if there's capital market imperfections. Second, coming back to a theme of earlier lectures, if the firm expects a federal bailout for those who suffer in disasters, then it may be less likely to make these investments. And this is the old FEMA moral hazard case again. If you expect a bailout, you're less likely to engage in ex-ante self-protection. Finally, does the firm have rational expectations? How did it form its estimate of uh, omega divided by two? If the firm uh, underestimates that probability, then it's less likely to make this investment in self-protection and will suffer more, unlike this example from today's New York Times.